welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the AMX 13F3 AM. It's the tier 6 French SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Prokhorovka. And this one is under the command of Red Dog Alpha 1. So we've seen this one before in action. He's got two marks of excellence on the barrel. That 155mm howitzer mounted on top of an AMX 13 hull. Game on. It's actually a very good RT, the AMX 13F3. They were in action, um, or rather they, they were in use for quite some time. And I believe that there are still quite a few of these available. In fact, um, I do believe that they are actually still uh, in service with certain countries. And the French did sell a lot of them to South America. Argentina bought them, Ecuador, um, Cyprus, Kuwait, Morocco, quite a few states actually bought them. Okay, Qatar was another country that bought them. So did the UAE, Sudan, Chile, Peru, Venezuela, rounds out. Now, the rounds are capable of doing 680 Alpha. At least I think it's 680 if I remember correctly. 630 Alpha. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. 39mm um, pen. And, of course, it's uh, capable of doing a burst radius of 7.6 metres. And 11 to 22 millimetres are uh, 22 seconds of stun rubber. Okay, it's just setting the aim. That's a hit right on the back of the turret. That was a useful hit, actually. Now, he's changing position after each shot, just to make sure. Now, the hull actually only contains two crew members, the uh, commander and the driver. Everyone else carries is carried in a separate truck, along with most of the ammunition, because they can't carry much on the actual hull of the vehicle. Another direct hit, this time on the P-43Biz. Standard reload is 30.50 seconds. He's got 26.47, so that's quite good. Okay, oh, got two tanks together there. For a moment, that looked like a perfect target. Aim for one, you get the other. Okay, he's going for the P-43Biz again. Rounds out. Oh, kill shot! It went in the rear, I think. I'm pretty sure that actually hit the rear of the vehicle and went straight through the side armor. And, oh, now that shell there just passed in front of us was a tank shell. So somebody is firing in this general direction. He may have been aiming at somebody else, but it went very close to hitting us. We're dialing in on a Skoda, but change position because there's another Skoda over there. And a T-3485M, who's actually fairly low on hit points. I'm trying to lead the target, because he's actually coming down the hill. Unfortunately, he got a bit of reticule bloom there. And there goes the end of that uh, medium. Fires up at the top of the hill to get the Skoda. Didn't get anything from that one, I'm afraid. It was the SU-8, I think, who managed to uh, put a round into that T-3485M. They started work on this tank in 1959 and they started producing them between 1962 and 1997. They built 621 of them in total. As I say, it's based on the AMX 13 ton tank, so it's a reliable hull. Oh, he's going to try and hit that guy while he's holding the armor in front of him. Yes, he does. 222 and there's a kill shot which means he picked up the sun assist and that amx 12 times thought no i'm not staying here i'm pulling back that was a wise decision but that skoda t25 is making exactly all the wrong decisions there by staying up where he is he's still trying to 
get up onto a position where you can take a shot. And we've lost sight of him temporarily. Our BK2801 is doing circuits trying to spot everyone, but he has taken a considerable amount of damage. And I'm not so sure he'll be around for very much longer because there's an enemy Jackson up there as well somewhere. And the Scalers come across the uh, railway line. Rounds out. Direct hit right in the face. Oh, that was pretty final. So that's the second kill for Red Dog Alpha 1. He's looking just at the bushes over this side. In fact, somebody's managed to move up. And it's it the AMX 12 ton. It is. Let it settle, let it settle, let it settle. So he didn't have to worry about that one. But if he had fired prematurely, he probably would have missed it. Now, I think he's banking on that fact that Jackson, that enemy Jackson, is still up there. We're losing tanks. We're down to just four left on our team. The VK hasn't been taken out yet, though he's still in action. I'm surprised, actually. Okay, our Churchill 7s decided to move up the other end. And, well, we just lost the VK. He was taken out by a Basotto. I think the Churchill's going to find who is up there. The Basotto is on the other side, next to the railway line. If the Churchill's going to find somebody... Oh, he has found someone. And it's the Type 58, the Chinese version of the T-3485M. Rouse out. Oh, nice, because it tracked him. And that will enable the Churchill to get some damage. Unfortunately, we just lost the Nashorn to the Basotto, though. So now it's two versus five. And the Churchill's a little further up, but... He has killed the Jackson. And there's the T Type 58 again. We're loaded. Rounds out. Oh, right in the face again. He did stun our teammate, but boy, did he get a nice kill there. And that means now it's just the Basotto and two Arty versus a Churchill 7 and an AMX 13F3. And they don't know where we are, but they certainly saw the Churchill 7. And they're still continuing to hit him. And I think one of the RT is over by the railway line at the back. And the other one might be where the SU-8 was last seen. We're just having a look ahead. The Churchill 7's come back. I think he's working on the basis that that Basotto is going to probably try and cap. And he is capping. It can't be the RTs. That must be the Basotto. So what we need the Churchill 7 to do is find out where that... Basotto is, and let us have a go at him. He's probably behind the cap. No reset, so he wasn't there. He must be to the south of the cap in the bushes. Okay, we're going to change position just in case the enemy RT saw where the tracer came from. Churchill's getting closer. Come on. There's a bush there to the, just to the south of the cap. Just within the cap area, there's a bush. Well, twigs, actually, more than anything. But that will be enough. We haven't seen him yet. There he is. He is to the south. Okay, line him up. And rounds out. Well, it did stun him, but it didn't get a, a hit. But we are picking up stun assist. Unfortunately, the Churchill 7 is taking RT rounds. Come on, set it up, line it up. Get ready for the fire. Oh, he's got him! Okay, now, everyone, look, go north. The Churchill has been taking fire. But what we need to do now is head north. This is where this tank really comes into its own because it's got a 60 kilometers an hour top speed. The Churchill 7 just got hit and he's now down to a one shot for the enemy RT. If he goes out of the action, then it's going to be down to Red Dog Alpha 1 to save the day. 
He's headed north now. Good. Now, this tank is particularly good at uh, getting big damage from shotguns. And remember, it is reasonably fast. So, if you do get hit, or if the enemy, um, or rather, if you do spot the enemy, you can get your shot in and then maneuver to avoid them hitting you. The enemy team's got an AMX 13 F3 AM and an SU 8. I'm pretty sure the AMX 13 F3 is probably by the railway line and the SU 8 might be on the west side. I'd stick to the tree line. Number of tanks on the tree line there. He's going to have a similar view range. So you'll both come across each other virtually at the same time. Best, best thing to do is to get really close before you fire. And he's found one of them. In fact, actually, it's the Amix 13F3. The SU-8 hasn't been spotted yet, but we can certainly deal with this one, even though he's the other side of the railway line. I think that was Sir Churchill getting a proximity spot. From this position, he's gone close to the railway wagon, so it's a little more difficult to hit. So we're looking at the back of that uh, railway wagon. The thing is, the Churchill is being spotted. And that means that the enemy RT, the SU-8, could be trying to hit him. So now might be a good idea to take out that SU-8. And then it's only the AMX-13 F3 to deal with. We found him. Now, get close. He can't manoeuvre quickly enough. So get close. Get behind him. That's it. Turn. Yes! That worked. Well done. Now move away. As quickly as you can. The AMX-13 F3 won't be able to react. And now they've got a real chance of winning this now. There's the AMX-13 F3. He's coming up to our side of the map. Now, set yourself up and get ready. He's loading. There's the AMX-13 F3. We've lost sight of him, but he is trying to get close to our Churchill 7. Where are you? There you are. Okay, wing him. Rounds out. Oh, kill shot! <laughs> that was good. Splashed him to death. Here's the end of battle results, and that was a first-class tank of a Red Dog Alpha 1 in the AMX-13 F3. He managed a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He actually ended up with five kills in the end, one short of getting a top gun, and also one-third of the enemy team. He killed both enemy RTs, one by shotgun and the other by aim shot. So that got him a counter-battery fire medal, as well as a bruiser for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 13 out of that one. His win eight from the battle, 3,237, which is Super Unicum standard. Very well done as well. He kept his cool when the SU-8 was trying to maneuver to get away from him, but he did exactly the right thing because you get close to, to get an accurate shot. And then if the enemy tries to maneuver on you, then you can uh, turn on him because this thing turns quite quickly. It's got a good traverse speed and then you can take them out fairly easily. So very, very well done. And then at the end, yes, he kept his call on the enemy AMX 13 F3 and managed to put a shell very close to him. But you saw that that AMX tried to get away. He did try, but it was just too late. He fired. He realized his mistake in missing uh, that he was on the, going to be on the receiving end and just couldn't move fast enough. But normally this little RT can move quickly enough if you're in a hunting mode, um, if you've gone to shotgun mode or TD mode, then you can get close to the enemy because it does move quick enough to do that. So let's have a look at the uh, team score. He didn't get the highest damage in the game. That went to the Churchill 7, who actually picked up a high caliber Confederate and a defender in that one. 2,910 hit points to him. Second highest damage actually went to Red Dog Alpha 1 with 1,673. And the third highest damage went to the Skoda T25 on the enemy team with 1,631. That was the one who got shot right in the face by one of Red Dog Alpha 1's shells. When it came to kills, yep, Red Dog Alpha 1 got that one with five kills. 
three kills went to the Churchill 7 and to the T-3485M, the AMX-13 F3AM on the enemy team and also their Basotto. When it came to base XP, it's the Churchill that did the best with 1,242 because he was doing some spotting in there as well. 936 went to Red Dog Alpha 1 and 770 went to the VK2801 who was doing circuits up and down the field trying to spot for us. Uh, the Churchill 7, yes, he deserved that uh, that high score. Uh, he really did put in a good job and it, he was getting struck repeatedly by enemy RT every time he got spotted. But he was doing the spotting which enabled Red Dog Alpha 1 to get some damage on the enemy. And of course then he provided the spot right at the very end of the game to allow us to take out the enemy RT. So uh, well done for both. 13 shots fired, 7 direct hits, 1 penetration, which must be that SU-8. He took it right in the side of the vehicle, and there's really no way that the armour would stop that. Yes, it was a pen. 300 hit points right through the side. No problem whatsoever. 14 splashes, damage of 1,673, of which 1,216 were at more than 300 metres, the close shot being the SU-8. He damaged 9 of the enemy, killed 5. 664 hit points of stun assist off nine stuns. 42,515 credits to the game. And after ammunition resupply, took away 29,515 credits. 25 bonds for mission completion. 1,404 XP. Times four for the first victory. 5,616 experience points altogether. Let's have a quick look at the armor profile for this vehicle. It is basically an AMX 13 ton tank. It's very light armor. Of course, that's why it has uh, such a light weight because they've taken all the armor away. In fact, the best armor on the vehicle is right at the very front, which is only 40, 40 millimeters. And you can't really get much out of that. The upper plate 15 millimeters, giving you about 28. Lower plate 20 millimeters. Basically, it doesn't have anything really that you could call armor except maybe the tracks. <laughs> that's a bit embarrassing so uh, yes not going to stand up to any shells hitting it if you look at the uh, armor profile on the live model yeah again anything that touches this thing's going to go straight through let's have a look at the modules i think we have seen these before but there you go you see the engines on the left hand side of the vehicle as we're looking at it drivers on the right hand side the commander's directly behind him with the radio set the fuel is behind the engine transmissions in front of the driver in fact it's the same for virtually all the amx 13 ton tanks including the other RT that you can actually get two loaders actually at the back of the vehicle but the crew as i said is a crew of six normally not a crew of uh, four as you're seeing there the um or oh, crew of, uh, the, the gunners there actually sorry i missed the gunner so it's not a crew of four it's crew of five but it's actually a crew of six uh normally that operates one of these uh, artilleries but uh yes it's um it's a very good machine and i think actually it'd be quite fun owning one of these uh although probably a lot of work to uh, maintain it because of course uh, unless you keep it all garaged up to to stop the rain getting at them they get fairly rusty fairly quickly but uh, yes, it just uh, needs a lot of loving care. There are, oh, as I said, there's a lot of them about. They did make 621 in total. So I think you probably would still be able to pick one of these up somewhere from a scrapyard or whatever. And uh, I think actually, though, the AMX 13105 AM would probably be a better bet. And, and of course, one of the Watt Nibs members actually does own one of those. He's actually got it. He's restoring it. So I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.